Hello, this is Mr. Villapec, and today's quick little talk is on dihybrid crosses, or taking a look at two traits at a single time. And when we look at dihybrid crosses, we're going to analyze two traits at a time, so usually the key gets a little bit bigger. You know, in this example here, we're going to look at brown versus blue eyes, but also add in the trait of freckles. And so the first thing we need to do is come up with gametes. Now, typically with a monohybrid cross, uh, that's pretty simple. Because we would just take a look at these two alleles and split them in half and know that the, this allele will go into one gamete and this allele will go into another. But what happens if we add two traits here where we're looking at, you know, here's a heterozygous brown-eyed individual with someone who's heterozygous for freckles. Well, we're going to use an, an example out of math, which we call FOIL. I know math and science going together, boo, but it, it happens. Anyway, FOIL stands for, the F stands for first, and the O is outside, the I is inside and the L is last. And so when we come up with the gametes here, let's first do the F. So we take a look at the first alleles in both of these traits. And so we'd have big F, little F. All right, now if we take a look at the O for outside, we're going to take a look at the outside allele. So here we have the B, and then here we have the little F. And so here we get that gamete. The I stands for inside, so we're going to take a look at uh, these two little things here. So we have the little B, big F here. And then we have the last, which we'll take a look at the last traits here. So we'll take out the little b, little f. And as you can see here, that our Punnett square is going to get a little bit larger since we have four different gametes. So if we were to cross two of these uh, individuals right here, this is what the Punnett square would look like. So we have this 4 by 4 Punnett square. And if we run it through, you can see that we have 16 different possible uh, combinations for offspring. And so, you know, the next thing we typically do is to try to take a look at the phenotypic ratio or the phenotypic breakdown. And so here, first thing we're going to look for is anybody who has brown eyes and freckles. And so since we're using simple dominance, that's pretty easy. And I've color-coded the eye color for you to be a little bit simpler here. But, you know, here we have one. Uh, here's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wow, look at that. Nine people would end up with brown eyes and freckles. Uh, let's take a look at folks who have brown eyes with no freckles. And so, again, we're looking for someone who just inherited two little Fs but has brown eyes. And so here we go, if I just change the color here. Here we have one, two, three. So that pretty much gives us the rest of the brown eyed folks. So we have three brown eyes with no freckles. And now let's take a look at anybody with blue eyes and freckles. And right down here in this little corner is everybody with blue eyes. And so we're looking for anybody with a big F. So we have one, two, three. And then last but not least, uh, someone who's totally recessive, uh, blue eyes with no freckles, it gives us just one. And so what you see here is we have the typical Mendelian breakdown of a nine to three to three to one ratio. And it probably makes sense that the biggest number here is for those of us with both dominant traits. Because remember, in order to get the dominant trait, you just have to inherit one of the dominant alleles. And it also probably makes sense that these folks way down here, that we have just one uh, person who is totally recessive. Because remember, in order to get both recessive alleles, you have to inherit both, um, both recessive alleles for both recessive traits. And then these folks in the middle here are what I like to call tweeners, right? So they have either one, they have one dominant trait and one recessive trait. So Mendel found this time and time and time again. So let's look at another example here. Let's say we have this example where we're looking to cross someone who's heterozygous for brown eyes and who's male with a blue-eyed female. So instead of using freckles, we're going to introduce gender. Well, dad's traits here uh, here's heterozygous for brown, and then here's his male um, sex gametes. And then here's mom. Now mom's gametes are going to be pretty easy to figure out because she's, you know, homozygous recessive, so she can only give a little b for eye color. And she's basically homozygous for gender, so her gamete can only be little b, big X. But dad here is basically heterozygous for both. But I guess the question now is that is there another way to do this without foiling out his gametes and then crossing it with mom? And the answer is yes. 
What happens if we worked out too many Punnett squares? And on the left here, let's just focus on eye color. And on the right, let's focus on sex. And so uh, I just kind of quickly worked out the uh, crosses for you here. And so you can see here that we have a 50-50 chance to get brown eyes, and we have a 50-50 chance of getting a boy or a girl. So let's get back to our original question. And the question is, what is the probability of getting a brown-eyed daughter? And so here, let's take a look at the pro probability of getting somebody with brown eyes. Well, we have two possibilities out of four, or we can break that down into one half. So we have a one half probability of getting something with brown eyes. Now what is the probability of getting a daughter? Well again we look at this Punnett square and we have one two so again we have two out of four or we have one half. And now since we want this event to happen at the same time we need to multiply these probabilities together. And so if we multiply one half times one half and again, this is the probability of getting brown eyes, which we got right here. This is the probability of getting a girl, which we got right here. We get the resulting probability of getting a brown-eyed girl is one-fourth. And most students find this to be much, much easier to do than working out that 4 by 4 Punnett square. And what's great about this is if you get really good at working out many Punnett squares, you can have 3, 4, 5 traits, and it doesn't matter. All you'd have to do is multiply the resulting probabilities to get your answer. Well, I hope this was helpful. This is a nice little review of dihybrid crosses, and I hope this helps ace any problem that you might have with dihybrid crosses. And as always, thanks for listening.